Hi, my name is Randy Agert, and this is a brief introduction to pragmatics. Speech acts, locution, elocution, perlocution. When we talk about speech acts, it's important that we recognize three aspects for any speech act. First of all, there's the locution, which is the linguistic form of the utterance. So that means it's the sounds, it's the phonemes, the morphemes, the words, the syntax, the semantics, all of it that goes into the mental grammar that helps us to produce the actual utterance. Another way of saying it is the locution is what is said. The elocution, on the other hand, gets more at the intentions of the, the utterer, the speaker. It's the intended purpose of the utterance. Another way of thinking of it is what is produced in saying the locution. The perlocution, on the other hand, is looking at the other side of it. It's looking at the recipient. It's the effect of the utterance. It's what's produced by saying the locution. Those last two, I think, are, are sometimes hard to, to differentiate. So another way of thinking of this is in uttering the locution, what was the speaker doing? Or if we wanna look at perlocution, after hearing the locution, what did the hearer do? So again, there are these three aspects to any speech act. There's the locution, the linguistic properties of the utterance. There's the elocution, the manifest intentions of the speaker in making the utterance. And I, I say manifest because these have to be on the surface. There can't be hidden intentions. Those don't lead to elocutions. And then the perlocution is the effect of the utterance on the recipients. Now notice that the speaker has control over the illocution, but not over the perlocution. They can guide it and they can attempt to produce a particular perlocution, but they can't perfectly control what the hearer does. I wanna use this man gesturing with his hand at something obviously and seeing glass. Now we can imagine all sorts of different contexts for this. I'll, I'll give you a few and I'm sure that you can come up with many, many more. Okay, now in one situation, maybe he's accompanied by somebody who is barefoot and he's gesturing at the ground and pointing at some broken glass saying glass. Or another one, imagine that he is a father and he has told his children to clean up the house and he's now patrolling the house afterwards, looking for things that are out of place and sees a glass in the living room and says, glass. Or imagine that this is a English as a second language teacher and um, he's just teaching new words, tree, house, glass. Or imagine that he wants somebody to hand him a glass. So he holds out his hand and says, glass, or imagine that he's uh, ranting about just how dirty the park is, and he's pointing out all the litter, you know, can, glass, all sorts of different possibilities. Now, the question is, in saying glass, in each one of these different contexts, the man was doing what? Well, in that first example where the person is barefoot, he's warning. In the second example, he is, you know, where, where he's the father and um, telling the kids that they messed up, he's reprimanding. In um, the teaching example, he's informing. In the example where he wants somebody to hand him a glass, he is requesting. Uh, in the park example where he's looking at all the litter, he's complaining. Each of those is a type of speech act. Each of those is a, what we can call a metapragmatic descriptor of speech acts. On the other hand, we could also look at the effect, the perlocution. So after the man said glass, the hearer did what? 
Well, again, in that first case where it's a warning, the barefoot person probably went around the glass. In the reprimand case where the children neglected to clean up a glass, they presumably picked up the glass and put it in the sink. In the example of the classroom, then presumably the students learned. In the example of a request that he be handed a glass, presumably the hearer handed the glass over. And in the case of the complaining, maybe the person that's being complained to just simply commiserated. In each one of those cases, it would, those would be the perlocutions.